I'm going to show you how to daisy chain together two rainbows so that you can make more complex patterns. Here you can see I have this interesting uh, comet that's bouncing from one rainbow to the other. I'll show you how I wired these rainbows together so you can daisy chain them and then we'll get to coding. Let's get started. I've connected the two rainbows together using three wires. I've connected the grounds, that's the negative symbol using the black lead the positive, that's for power, using the red lead. And I've connected the DO on one rainbow to the DI on the other. So that's the data output of one connected to the data input of the other. So that means that this one, this is my first rainbow in the string. And the rest of the wiring is pretty similar to our previous projects. We have black for ground going into the first rainbow, coming from ground on the micro bit. We have 3V on the red going to 3V on the first micro bit and yellow going from pin zero on the micro bit to data on the first rainbow. And then all these connections are daisy chained to the second. Double check your wiring and then connect your micro bit to your computer with the USB lead and we're ready to start coding. Let's begin with an import of NeoPixel. Globits are compatible with the NeoPixel driver library. We're working with two rainbows here, so that's 26 LEDs connected together. I'll create a variable called num LEDs and assign that 26. We'll declare the rainbow, NeoPixel dot capital Neo capital pixel, or on pin zero, and we have num LEDs connected. So this comet effect, we have the head of the comet, which is the brightest LED, and then they kind of tail off. They become dimmer and dimmer after that first LED. So I know I'm going to want some starting brightness, and that's the head of the comet. I'll call that head brightness. And we'll stick to 60 for now. And then in our loop, we know we're going to assign the head brightness to the first LED, and then we'll take some smaller brightness and assign that to the next LED and so on until the tail kind of disappears. So for now, I'm just going to use a variable called val and set that to head brightness and then loop through every LED for i in range zero to num LEDs. We want to assign that brightness to the first LED, rainbow, rainbow I equals val. So here I'm assigning that brightness value just to the red channel in the red, green, blue LED. Now for the next LED, we're going to reduce that brightness value by some amount. So here I'll say val equals val divide by two. And this is a special division. This is a floor division. What that means is we'll never wind up with any decimal places. We'll always wind up with some whole number. And that's really important for the rainbow. We need to pass in whole numbers for our brightness values for these red, green, and blue channels. I think that's enough to get started with. So I'll exit the for loop and call rainbow show to update the LEDs. And then we'll throw in a sleep for, let's say 50 milliseconds. Connect to your micro bit with the connect button and select it from this list that appears. And then we can hit flash. Okay, so far so good. We've got our bright LED and then the adjacent LEDs become dimmer and dimmer in one direction. All right, now we need to animate the LEDs and we're gonna use the old trick from the LED marquee project. I'll declare a variable called frame and set that to zero. We're going to start on the zeroth frame of animation. And then this is where the magic happens, where we index the LEDs. I'm going to pad that out so we can see it a little easier. So I'm going to put the I, the index inside some brackets and add frame to it. And then take all of that and use the mod of num LEDs. And just briefly, what this is doing is we're incrementing which LED is going to be the head of the comet. And then by taking the mod num LEDs, 
we're wrapping around when we reach either end. So when we go beyond t uh, the, the 26th LED, it's going to wrap around and start again from the start. And of course, to make this animate, we're going to have to increment frame. So I can say frame equals frame. And I think to make it move in the right direction, this will have to be frame minus one. Flash the code. Look at that. How nice is that? We have a beautiful bouncing comet. It's kind of bouncing from one rainbow to the other. I'm going to give it a longer tail. I'm going to take this, this value update and I'm going to divide it by, I don't know, maybe just 1.5. You know, it just occurred to me that we're going to get an error if we want to modify how our comet is built. So this, this is going to affect how the tail length is created and we can only use integers here. So maybe it would be better to say value times 0 0.5 and then round the result. That's the same as saying value divided by two and we're rounding to an integer. While we're at it, let's make our comet a little bit longer so we can multiply it by 0.75 instead of halving it. Great, and now we have a comet with a much longer tail. But now we've introduced a new bug or feature and that is that the dim LEDs will never fully turn off. They actually stay just a little bit lit. I don't know if that comes out too well on camera. So we could just say if val is equal to one, val equals zero. And that will make sure that the LEDs turn off fully. And you know, if I make a ring out of my rainbows, that comet just goes around and around. Beautiful. So there you have a multi rainbow project. I hope you feel inspired by this little project. If you make something cool out of it, or if you have any questions, we'd love to hear from you over on the Core Electronics forums. We're full-time makers and here to help. Happy making.